Today we're going to be making three all new fall decor DIYs. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project will be a Hello Wreath. So we're going to start off with some beautiful ribbon from Dollar Tree. If y'all have been in there, y'all have seen these gorgeous, gorgeous colors. I'm loving the blue that they have added. Love it very much. So we're going to use it for sure. So I've got three different colors. They're all wired. This little hello sign came from the Crafter Square. We're going to use about two and a half rolls of this deco mesh. It's the cream color with the gold in it. Choose whatever color you like. I'm going to use some pipe cleaners that sort of match my deco mesh and then a 14 inch wreath from Dollar Tree. Almost everything in this wreath is going to be from Dollar Tree. Okay, so we're going to go to the outside. I was having an issue here getting this. I don't know what I was thinking, but you know how it is. Okay, so you just go to the outside and I'm going just as a measurement by the crossbar there and I'm going to wrap it just a few times. See, those are the outside two and then I'll go to the inside two right in the middle of the crossbar sections and give that a twist for my next section. Then I'm going to go on the other side of that crossbar. Again, same process. We're just going to do it over and over. I'm going to wrap it around here. I don't want it to move much, so I'm trying to do it where it will stay kind of snug. I don't like my pipe cleaner sliding up and down, so it just makes it easier for me. If you want to do it that way, you can certainly do it. Okay, so we're going to do the same process in, out, in, out until it is completely full, and you will have 12 pipe cleaners. Six on the inside, six on the outside. Now, let's work on that deco mesh. I am going to take these in sections. We're using 18 inch sections and hopefully your rotary blade is sharper than mine. I have used it to death and it is time for a new blade. I am going to do 24 of these little rolls. 24 now. So I'm going to going to just use that to hold my end and we're going to make some cruffles or woodland ruffles. I've heard them called a million things. I'm not claiming this is my technique. Um, somebody else did this and I've seen it done before. So if that bothers you, I don't know who to give credit to. I don't know, but that's what, that's what we're going to do. We're going to roll that up on each end and squish it up in the middle. This is really not hard to do y'all. You're going to roll it. It's about the diameter of a quarter. Then I'm going to walk my little fingers down it to the last few inches and thankfully it tries to roll on itself. So that'll help you out there, but you can use a clip on the side if you need to. Once you get two of those ready, you're going to cross one over the other like an X and put it right down onto a section of your pipe cleaners. And you can start anywhere you want to on the wreath. You don't have to do it on the outside. This is close to me, so I decided to put it down here. Look how pretty and fluffy that is. And believe me, this type of a, a um, technique makes a bigger coverage for your wreath if you're using less. And I'm trying to show you how to do this from Dollar Tree because I want this to be budget friendly for you, okay? And when you do it this way, you have a little less fraying, which makes it very nice um, in my opinion. You're going to lock in those little loose edges. Sometimes the outer edges will come out. So you just pull that off. If you see one or two that are coming off, just pull it out of there. Not a problem. Okay, so now we have our next section. And we're just going to cross it over like an X. And look at that cute little bundle of roughly bow. Very cute. Push it down in there. Twist it in tight. So you can see how much coverage it's going to give already. Now let's go all the way around using the same process. And here is what it's going to look like. I'm going to go in and just sort of arrange a little bit to make sure that all the sections are covering the wire underneath. And I'm going to pull out my pipe cleaners. So they're easier to find when we put the bow stacks or the ribbon stacks on top. So just going to make it an easier process. And you can see I pulled a edge out of there. Pulled it, pulled another one out. Okay, so I'm going to take this hello sign. I'm going to give it a little sanding because they are, you know, they're unfinished. So they need a little work and I don't want any more splinters than I already have in my poor fingers. Wipe the dust away. And then uh, this is just a dry rag that I'm using. And then we're going to fill in the hole by putting a little bit of tape on the back. 
and then on the front I'll fill it in with some of this lightweight spackling that I got from Dollar Tree. I've had a couple of little containers of this and if you put the lid on right it'll last you forever. This is the only thing I use it for. After I've packed it in that hole I'm gonna just scrape it off to make it level and then add a little bit of heat to help it dry. We're gonna cut our ribbon sections down in nine inch pieces. If you do more, it's going to get kind of floppy, and we don't want it to be floppy. So that's why I chose 9 inches for this. So we're going to do 9 inches of the blue, of the orange, and of the plaid. All are going to be the same size, and we are going to be dovetailing. Very easy here. Very easy. Okay, that's what we call a dove, D-O-V-E, tail, dovetail every one of them make sure you get it right i want to be sure that for those of you who are new and i do have some people who are just now starting to craft so if you're baby crafters um and i don't mean to insult that way it just you know young means young if you're a new or young crafter this is how you're going to be able to do it i'm going to stack those up whichever pattern you like generally i like to have a solid color in the middle of my prints but you can do this any way that looks good to you I'll bunch them up in the middle. I'm gonna pull my wreath back over. And then, as we did before, just any section you like, go ahead and get started. Now it's easier for me if I continue around in a clockwise fashion because then I know I'm not missing any sections where the pipe cleaners are. So I did the outside first and I know my next section is going to be toward the inside and I've already fished out all of my little tails here or all of my little pipe cleaners so I should be able to easily get the next layer down in place. Look how pretty that is and all the little wired ribbons just stand out on their own nicely. You give it a lot of bulk. So I know a lot of people don't like deco mesh, but if you're using it just as a base, you can really work around it and cover most of it up, you know, if you don't like it. But there are some benefits of the deco mesh, you know. In my opinion, I do use it, but I just don't go crazy and do an entire wreath of deco mesh because that's just, you know, that's not my style, but that doesn't mean that that might not be something that you like. And certainly take the ideas you get here on my channel and then make it your own. Okay, so you can see here, this is the third one. I'm doing this and taking my time here so that everybody can clearly see what I am doing. I don't want to leave anybody behind in our crafting journey. Okay, so we did the outside, the inside, and now we're back on the outside again. The fluffing part is just something I like to do, but you can certainly wait until later because you're gonna be moving this around a little bit. You can wait until later to fluff if you want to. All right, look how beautiful this wreath is just on its own. Beautiful. I love, love that navy blue with the orange and cream. That is so pretty to me. You know, possibly if you wanted to, you could use this, um, at the end of summer going into fall and it would just i love this love it love it love it now once that sign is dry i'm going to take some of this beautiful foliage paint and i'm going to add it over my letters i'm using a small brush um, and just going over this whole thing Did y'all hear we now have channel memberships available on this channel? Absolutely, and there are so many benefits. If you hit the join button below, you can learn more. Thanks. Continue along with that brush all the way around. I'm just doing the top. I'm not doing the bottom section um, or the in between little sections. I'm not trying to cover that. I like that it has that dark brown. It just kind of makes it pop to me. So I'm going to leave it that way. You can, um, what you didn't see is the chalk paint, uh, sheep skin is the color that I used. You can also use a spray paint in something like, uh, heirloom white. That would be really, really pretty too. It's just a creamier color, uh, rather than a stark white. So you can see here, um, I'm taking my time, I'm making sure I get good coverage, and I did go over this 
twice. I let it dry and then did it twice. Look at the beautifulness. Love it. Now look at these little cuties that I found at Dollar Tree. And I'm, on a, I'm going to be using these furniture repair markers, oak, maple, and cherry. And I'm going to use that to paint, if you will, some of these cute little, I don't know, appliques, I guess you could call them. So I'm going to do several of them. I'm going to use a couple of different colors and, you know, kind of give them a little bit of depth. I'm going to make them a variety of different colors, like you would see out in the woods. So once they're completely dry, because I don't want to mess up my cream colored finish here, I'm going to look around and see where I'd like my pieces to go. So where you see me put them before the glue is just an idea um, for you as to where you want to put yours. Now, what if you can't find these? You can use stickers, definitely. You could draw something on here. You could paint something on here. You could use any of the appliques. You can find the little, I think they're like, um, six packs or maybe three packs of leaves over in the crafter square section and you could use those just a couple of ideas of what you might could use these were so cute and i love the idea of it and y'all know i like my my deep earthy tone colors so these just really did it for me i really thought it was a cute look again this is another point where you could stop if you would like some people think i'm doing too much but that's what gives me joy so that's how i do mine and you can do yours any way that you like. So in the same package, they have some of these little berry stems. I'm gonna leave those just natural colored. I'm not even gonna paint those. I'm gonna leave them natural, because they're cute either way. And I think that'll give us a little more difference in our brown colors. So the scoops we had left over from our ribbon, we had just enough ribbon to give us a couple of inches of scraps on the rolls. So this one had a little more than the other two did. I'm gonna try to make a little bow out of this. I'm cutting this at a dovetail, but at a very slight angle compared to the bows or the ribbon tails that we put on the wreath. I hope that made sense. Okay, so I'm gonna cut each one and I want them to be where when I stack one on top of the other that you can still see the beautiful colors and patterns of each one. So the longest one will be on the bottom, and then the next one will be in the middle, and then the shortest one's going to be on top. You can see what I'm doing here. And you see how I've got them stacked down there? I'm going to grab those, squish them up in the middle, grab a little scrap piece of jute, and then I'm just going to tie that right in the center. I'm going to bunch it up and make it look almost like a little bow tie, if bow ties were stacked right yes okay so i'm going to trim off this because we're not going to tie this on we're actually going to use some hot glue it's very lightweight and we shouldn't have a problem with the hot glue working here i'll put it right up top in the almost in the middle you know i get a little cray cray but uh almost in the middle and then i'm going to just put a little dot of glue and smear it around because this is so narrow and just kind of smear it with the end of the gun to uh, make it stick down, to give it enough coverage, but I don't want bubbles of glue sticking out. You know what I'm, you know what I mean? We want to keep it neat, high-end looking, right? We don't ever want our, our projects to scream Dollar Tree. Not that there's anything wrong with Dollar Tree, but you know, you always want to achieve a high-end look, something that's a little different. So I think we accomplished it with this. Now, I just decided at the end to go ahead and add one of these in the middle of my bow. So I pulled out a little, it's two acorns together, and I'm just going to color those with two different color of those furniture repair markers. And then I'll hot glue that right in the middle of that little bow. So we have to have a way to attach it. And I'm not for using hot glue to attach it. It's just messy, messy, messy. So we're going to use pipe cleaners that we're going to thread down into the wreath. A little hot glue, a little piece of paper, let it cool, and then you can bend these up like a hairpin. Okay, now there's the back, here's the front. I'm gonna lay it down, and then I'm going to feed the top through the deco mesh and through the wreath form, and then twist it. I'm not going to bury it in there. I want it to look like it is floating. I want it to be the on the outside, right? So I'm not gonna pull it too tight, just enough where it's nestled down in all the beautiful little bundles of ribbon. And then when you hang it up, 
you can simply hang it right off of the form, right off the wire wreath form. How about that? You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 6. Subscribe for free, and I'll see you in the comments. Our next project is going to be a harvest planter. This is a big one, y'all. We're going to need floral foam. We're going to need three of these planks that are the same size as the um, panel plank that you see down there. I only had two, so we're going to use an Easter sign for the other. We're going to need a trellis from Dollar Tree. I'll be using some cutting tools and a metal ruler. We're going to take the hangers off and the tags off because we are not going to be needing those for this project. We're going to turn these signs into a box. That's right, a planter box. So I'm going to cut these at 18 inches. I'm going to measure down from the end and make two marks on each of these planks. And it's actually going to be all three of them because I have to cut the other one to make is the bottom. These will be our sides. The short pieces that we have left over are going to be the end pieces. And then the bunny sign, the section we cut off of that will be the bottom. So I'm scoring this and this is just a carving tool and I'm just going to cut, cut, cut into there. Now, if you don't want to do it this way, go ahead and use your miter box and your saw. When you pop it like that, if you have not scored it on the other side too, you will have some, some breaking. I did, you can see here how I goofed it up. I left it in here so you could see. I'm going to use a permanent marker and cover it up. Now you'll never even know. How about that? We don't give up that easy, do we? Okay, I'm going to take some of my building blocks and start looking at how we want to assemble that. There's the bunny sign. So I know the bunny's going to be the bottom, these are going to be the sides, and they are going to stand like so. Okay? In my mind, I'm thinking of where I'm going to glue everything. So, if you go to the inside, about as wide, and I'm not giving you an exact measurement because I don't do that on my channel, <laughs> but it's about an eighth of an inch fourth to an eighth of an inch just enough room so that these are supports and when we set that other panel up it is going to sit snugly against that right up against those little pieces okay so we got the bottom down now I'm gonna add glue I'm gonna just line it up so I know exactly where those blocks are I'm gonna add my glue flip it up sit it down on that base and hold it tight now I'm gonna hold it there for a minute or so so that that glue is dried then I'm going to go around, turn it around to the other side, and we'll do the same exact process on this side. So the building block is attached to the bottom and attached to the side. These are our supports that are going to hold it all together. This is a piece that you will need to keep inside. This is not real wood, and if it gets rained on, it will fall to pieces. This is an inside arrangement only, folks. Okay, so lift it up, push it down so that it's sitting on that base. Once it's cooled, we'll start on the sides. Same process here for the end pieces. And you can see how these are these, these signs are a little bit warped. They always are when I get them from Dollar Tree. I don't know if it's just my store. Do y'all experience that too? No worries though, they're so lightweight. We're gonna make this work. So I'm going to use these on the sides as well. I'll have glue to the short part and to the thick part and then that way I am gluing you'll see here so the short side and the thick side and then I will push those right up so that both pieces touch each side or the side in the end leave it there hold it hold it and wait I didn't make y'all watch me hold it the whole time and then I'll go back in with my glue once everything's cooled and go around all of the seams with my glue. This is just going to give it more support and more stability. Here we are on the last section we have to glue down. Same exact process. Supports, holding those together. Okay, so now we're going to take that black chalk paint that I have and I just chose to go over all of my edges. Now you don't have to do this because it already looks rustic and old. You know it's the same color as what it is in all of those little cracks in the planks. You could totally leave it like that if you want to but I just wanted to show you what you could do if it bothers you. The holes that are in the ends 
Fill those with a little hot glue. When the glue is dry, go ahead and paint them. And then you won't see those holes at all. This is gonna need some weight. So I found these wood scraps that my husband had left over from something he was working on. And I'm gonna use these just to put in the bottom. It's gonna work as a platform and it is also gonna give it weight. So yes, so it will not flip over when we add our things to it. I decided to use a pull noodle, cut that down where it fits in each side down there, adding some glue to those pieces of wood scrap. And I'll push those down in there. And this is just going to add a little bit more height in there so that the box, I don't have to reach so far down with the stems. You know, if you put your foam too far down, then your flowers are going to disappear into the box. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to trim down the leftover section and just add those little pieces of pool noodle scrap right down in there. And then I'll add some more foam right on top. Now this foam is like packaging foam, so it's kind of a, it's a really good quality foam. It works well, and I like to save it when I get things, and I'm always buying something. Okay, so I'm, I got this at the thrift store, but you can get like the hula skirts uh, from Dollar Tree if they still have them, and you can use this or some type of raffia if you have a big bundle, and just pull out sections, cut it off, and just press them down in there. I like to kind of wind mine up a little bit so it doesn't fall all over the place. Still gonna be a little fallout while you're putting it together though. And this is gonna kind of cover up the gaps if you put your flowers in and you can still, still see through them. I don't want that white to be showing. So these are leftover picks that have already been used before in other projects. I'm gonna use these. I'm also gonna use some scraps of leaves. And then I knew I wanted to use sunflowers for this, but any, you can use moms or anything that you wanna use. I just like to use the sunflowers. Now I chose sunflowers. These came from Dollar Tree that have a golden tint in the center. So they're yellow and gold. Some sunflowers are just all yellow, but I wanted mine to look more fall. So I chose these. I'm gonna cut these down, leaving them as long as possible. And the last one I'll leave on a long pick so that we have one long flower. I also have some sunflowers that are thrifted uh, as well. Now, I'm gonna add my trellis. I'm not gonna get it all the way against the backboard because I don't want the balance to be kind of, even though I put the blocks in the back, I'm just, I worry that it might try to tip over. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave some space there but I'll show you how to secure it. Now we've pushed it down into the foam and I'm also going to use some of these blocks. I'm using three because that's the, the space of mine between the wall of the box and the back of that trellis. See, it fits perfectly in there. That's gonna give me some more stability. I'll add some hot glue to the box and some hot glue on the back and the front side of the trellis and then I'll use a little black paper to cover that up to help hold everything down and it should be pretty darn secure at this point. Okay. Now the fun part, we get to start putting our beautiful little planner together. So I'm gonna take these picks that look sort of like Milo or wheat to me. It's probably not what they are, but that's what they look like to me. So we're gonna go with it. I'm gonna put one on each side. If I would have had three, I would have put one in the middle and cutting these apart makes a huge mess because they have grassy pieces that will fall out and they are free. They're not even on a stem. They're like wrapped around like a continuous piece. So yeah, not gonna do that. They have really pretty wheat picks at Dollar Tree too. If you can still find them, they are, they're very nice. All right, so here's some of my thrifted ones. They're on longer stems. So they are going to go in the back. If I would have had even longer pieces, I would have put them up higher than the grassy sections on the side. Ideally, that's how I would do it, but we're gonna make this work, okay? So I'm gonna continue to put these around. You know, sunflowers follow the sun, right? So ideally, I would have them all facing the same direction. You don't have to do it that way. Um, you could definitely put them off to the side or, you know, Perhaps if there are nestled underneath the grasses, they can't get to the sun like the rest of them. And that could be why they're shorter. We're gonna go with that. That's a pretty good excuse to me. We're gonna go with that. Okay, 
<laughs> ah. Okay, we're gonna just start adding in here. Now, like I said, some of them are shorter, some of them are longer. I want my longer ones to be toward the back and the shorter ones are going to be more toward the front. You may do this any way you like. I am also taking the heads of the flowers and twisting them where they are attached to the wire. If you bend that wire, it will make them face out. And that's what I want them to do. So that's what I'm going to do. Now these obviously are not all the same. I'm not bothered by that. I am using what I have left. And I don't think it's that noticeable in the end. Y'all can see my craft room around me. And for those of you who are already members, there are five of you and I am so excited. So just to give y'all a little mention, thank you, Tammy, Sheila, Nojo, Jane, and Betty, who are the new members for our brand new channel membership. You guys are gonna be able to take a look around my craft room and look at how I organize and all that behind the scenes stuff. So get ready, get ready. All right, now I'm gonna to continue to add in and some of these pieces, I think one of these picks came from Timu that I took apart. I uh, picked off, see the little baby ones? I think that gives it a little more interest. I like those in there. Once I get all those flowers in there, I'm gonna start adding the leaf picks that I cut apart. And there's like four leaves on each one of these. Some of these are more yellow. Some of these are more, or they're more muted, I guess. And some of these are more orange. I'm just trying to kind of put them here and there. And it also helps cover up the base. Can you believe I am finally almost out of fall foliage picks? I cannot believe it. It's very exciting though, because that means I get to go thrift for more. I love to thrift. Okay, we're gonna continue along. I get bothered when I have matchy matchy side by side. So I, you know, you will see me move things around. That's just, just how my mind works. But you can feel free to do this any way you like. And you don't even have to add these if you don't want to. You know, make it your own. We're all about budget friendly and just taking inspiration, right? Uh, the things I do are to or inspire you. You might not find the exact same thing that I have, but be inspired. I want you to start learning to think outside the box. What could you use instead? I get lots of great comments from people who tell me how they're gonna do, you know, something, or I get emails from people who tell me, they show me their pictures and I can see how they took that inspiration and they made it their own. And that is awesome. I'm so proud of y'all. You're really getting it. You're getting it, y'all. So here's that completed box. I just used those same markers to color my Harvest Wish sign. If y'all wanna learn about the Crafty Cruise Getaway, check out the link in the description box below. I would love to meet y'all. The next project is a leaf wreath. Okay, so here we go again with the ribbons from Dollar Tree. Beautiful green. Then I have this one. And then I have some that I got on clearance last year from Hobby Lobby. 90 off was really good. Here's a leaf, I think it's a wreath frame that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to take some leftovers. And these look a little bit like sunflowers and these are some berries. Y'all, these things I took inspiration from the ribbon, the beautiful ribbon. And so I chose my colors based on that. All right, I'm gonna cut everything down so I can make manageable pieces because we're gonna make a swag for this leaf. I'm getting an idea of how I want it to look. You know I always do this. I always lay it out before I glue or just make anything permanent. I'm gonna take a very thin craft stick, or you can um, split one of those regular craft sticks, popsicle sticks in half, or use any regular pick that you have left over. This is convenient because I had it right there beside me. I use them to mix my paint and such. Okay, I'm using some floral wire and I'm going to just twist to make sure that that stays on there. It is not glued down. It will freely move back and forth on this stick. So nothing is permanent yet. I'm gonna use the same process and put it on this end because it's a swag. So I want it to be somewhat similar. They will be not sisters, but cousins. Kind of like our eyebrows, you know. I, in my age, I have lost a lot of my eyebrows and so I have to draw them on and they never look identical. It is nuts. I'm always looking like Mr. Peanut or something with one eyebrow higher than the other. 
Oh, mercy. Anyway, uh, that's just how I see it. Everybody else says it's fine, but yeah, I don't know if I trust them folk. Okay, so we put our eucalyptus down on there too, and now I'm going to add some berries. These were little thrifted berries, but definitely at Dollar Tree right now, there's some really nice ones. Put those down. I'm going to just use that same piece of wire. You can add more wire when you need to. Um, the wire is easier for me than a pipe cleaner because pipe cleaners can get so bulky, and I don't want to use my zip ties yet, out at this point. I want this to not be too bulky, right? So this one little sad oak pick, this is all I had left of these, but I wanted to use it because I love oak trees. I'm going to lift up the smaller pieces and just lay this right on top of that first layer that I put down and add a little hot glue. Look at the difference between left to right. I really like that. Really like that in there. And I'll do the same thing on this side. And then we'll have one green left and we'll use that later, you'll see. I'm going to add a little hot glue. Keep those babies in place for now. And then the little pick that I chose because it looks a little bit like a sunflower. It's more like a Black Eyed Susan, I think. But I'm gonna have that in little manageable pieces. And I'm just going to lay those down on there. And then a extra layer right on the top of each one of those sides. If this is too much for you, stop at whatever level you want to stop at. You don't even have to add any of this to your leaf if you don't want to, but it's going to be kind of sad just sitting there by itself with nothing on it. And it deserves to be pretty. It deserves to live in your house. You spent the money on it. Let's use it. I didn't want to make a wreath with it. I didn't want to make a typical wreath because you will never see that beautiful frame underneath if you start piling it up with deco mesh. And I think the whole point for me is to be able to see the beautiful leaf. Once you have completed that swag to as much as you can, still having that middle section open so that you can wrap it around the tip of that leaf, go ahead and grab your zip tie and attach it to the top. So I'm making sure it's in the middle and then I'll really tighten it down and cut the excess off. Now, we're going to put a bow on here. That's right, we're putting a bow on it, and we're making a funky bow. It's been a while since we made one of those, and if you're new here, you're going to love this bow. Okay, so we're cutting these in 13 inches, and I am going to just show you how you can cut a dovetail when they're folded over, if you want to do it that way. One more time. Fold it over. We just folded that ribbon in half, and then we're going to fold it over and then cut upward. There you go. So we're gonna have two of each one, two gold, two green, and two of the printed ones. Now I'm gonna fold this where it's about a third folded over. See, one, two, three. Then I am going to pinch that section in the middle, so halfway down that short section, and clamp it tightly between my thumb and my forefinger. And I'm talking with my hands right now. I know y'all can't see me, but I thought I would share. I thought I would share that. Now we're going to do the same thing with every single ribbon that we do. We're going to hold them tight, push them together, hold them tight. And you want to be sure that you take your ribbons and do them in an order in your hand where you don't have two of the same ones side by side. Okay? Fold them over a third of the way down, grabbing it right in the middle of the shorter section, and holding it in your hand. Same thing, I never let go with my right hand. If you need help with this, you can certainly use a clamp or a clip to hold it. But for me, even having arthritis in my thumbs, I can still do this, okay? When you make them bigger, it's a little bit easier. Okay, so this is what we have so far and I'm still holding it. I'm gonna grab that zip tie, hold it with my finger, spin it around, push it through. I'm going to slide it over my thumb and then just kind of cinch it down. I did do a little quick check to make sure that all my bubbles are the same size or my loops. Then I'm going to tighten it and cut it off. Okay? Now, two options for the tails of this ribbon. You can flip these all out in one direction or you can have some of them going downward. Be sure your printed ribbon is facing the table. So we're doing this upside down. It should face the table. This is going to be the bottom of that bow. Yeah. 
also want to make sure you don't have two colors that are exactly the same side by side. You want to give it that interest and prettiness. You're going to take your fingers inside each of those loops and fluff those little pieces out. Now you're not going to get a huge fluff in a bow that is this small. When you get to making the bigger bows, you're really going to have an outstanding bow. But these little mini ones, I have been enjoying as well. I don't want to overpower the leaf. Okay, now I'm spinning all those tails downward. You can see I'm just kind of pulling them apart and pulling them to one side of the bow. See, now they're all under the bow. Continuing to fluff as we go along and don't become impatient. They don't look great when you start, but the more you handle them, the better they're going to look, okay? Now, I'm gonna use some hot glue and attach it right over where I put my zip tie on that swag. You can also um, put like a wire through there and wire it on or, you know, zip tie it straight to the back of it. This is just how I did it. When I get going, if you don't know me, when I get going, I just go with the flow. And sometimes I don't remember to do the most mundane of things, the most routine of things. But I make it work. I think I make it work. All right, so now we have to adorn the bow and I'm gonna add some berries here and there in that bow. And I'm also going to be adding some flowers in the bow. You got lots of little spaces where you can tuck in the stems, which makes it so nice. It's gonna hold them up. It's gonna give you more dimension in there. Here's a few more flowers. And at this point, we're trying to fill in the top section. This is going to look more like one solid piece other than, uh, rather than the swag that it, you know, was. I'm gonna elongate it just a bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of that extra green greenery down here in the bottom and where the tails are. They're just hot glued in. I'll add one up here on the top as well. And then the last of the beautiful oak leaves will be added right on the top. Just like that. All right, at this point I was like, wait a minute, we need to do something with that leaf. Have you ever been on a walk outside and you see a leaf that is just here? You can almost see through it and it has like a webbing through it. It's just, they're really beautiful. I don't know if it's the way they decay or if it's insects eating away at them. I'm not sure what it is, but they're stunning. And if I find one, I'm gonna be showing y'all in my video because I want you to understand what I'm doing here. So this mesh ribbon came from Dollar Tree. It comes in white, cream, brown, green. I don't even know what other colors it comes in, but I thought brown would be fitting here. So I'm going to use this to cover this leaf. I've got it flipped around to the back. I do not recommend that you use hot glue. It worked for me for this video, but super glue, something that will dry fast would be better. You could lay your ribbon on and just put it right on top of it. That would be so much better. So this hot glue has a tendency to drip. You have to be very careful. Either use a fine, um, like a fine tip glue gun so you don't have all that extra. I mean, after I got this done, I went back in with my heating tool and then melted as much of the bubbles that you could see on the back of my leaf. But it'd be so much neater to use something like a um, super glue here. Once it is all, look at that. Once you get it all together, look at it. I love that. Tell me you've seen a leaf like this. Tell me you've seen this. All right, y'all. I am very excited to reveal to you our three projects that we did today. I know some of you do not enjoy Halloween. You don't celebrate it. And that is A-OK. -okay. I'm still going to be bringing you fall. And so here are the new pieces that we made today. Some big pieces i think some show stoppers you could certainly paint your harvest wishes in bright colors or just make it white if you prefer farmhouse you can use the white to make the box if you want to you can change it all up but think of how you could make it your own if you enjoy budget-friendly diys that are unique i would love love for you to stick around and be part of our channel 
I'd love for you to subscribe. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button for me so that I know and that YouTube knows that this is quality material that I'm putting out there for you. The links that I mentioned before, you're gonna find in the description box below. And I would also love, love, love it if you would consider becoming a channel member. I would love that. Go check it out, see what we got going on. We've already got five people in one day and I'm so excited to have you here. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.